Hello? Should I just talk? They, come, they all come like stacked out. Grab it by the collar right here. And then you can just put it up in your other hand. And just kind of count it like that. Since this is front and back print, I, I usually start with the back and then print the front second. That's just how I learned how to do it. Um, and I have the screen right up here. You can see that, that's the back. So first we gotta tape this. I, I have a really bad habit of not putting any, any markings, any registration marks. Um, I kinda just line it up to the board uh, down here. Um, and then I'll just use like a ruler to make sure I've got a good spacing. So I just tape the the inside of the screen is what I refer to, is also referred to as the ink well, where the ink will sit. I also try to get it as straight as I can on the screen uh, when I burn the screen. Uh, and everything I do is done here, so I burn my screens down in my basement. This is actually my garage. You can see my inks right here, more ink, broken screens. So this is my press. There's six colors and four stations. You'll see in the back there's a flash dryer that'll dry in between layers. Uh, if it's a print flash print job, which means you print it and then you flash dry it. And then you either print right over it with the same color or most likely it would be white or you do a white underbase and then you print uh, a different color over it to get um, darker shirts will need an, a white underbase. I use water-based ink, so that's that's generally how it goes. Uh, some plastisol inks can go right on dark garments. You would have to do a print flash print, um, but you wouldn't have to do an underbase. I like to use water-based. It's much easier cleanup uh, at home. I've taped thousands of screens, so at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to rip it off anyway. And the purpose of this is just to make sure that the ink is just sitting in this ink well little parts of the screen are not covered by the emulsion and uh, if there was not tape on the inside the, the ink would just come through that yellow part just like it's gonna do for our print if I was like on an automatic machine and I was doing thousands of shirts then I would I would tape both sides I have had my flash on for a while uh, to let it heat up that's my main source of heat uh, for flash flashing and for curing and curing is once it's all once the print is all done, the ink actually has to heat up to a certain temperature uh, for it to stay on the shirt. And if it doesn't get up to the right temperature, it has a it can wa like wash out in the wash much easier. It may appear dry, but you can like pick at it and it will rub off, and that's just no good. So it's not the best way to do it, but it does work. The best way to do it is a conveyor belt dryer that is either gas powered or electric uh, gas powered or are the best. And that is just a tunnel of, of hot air that basically cooks your shirt at the perfect temperature. This I have to obviously pay attention to a little bit more. Um, the flash dryers have a tendency to, to scorch shirts a little bit, especially like white shirts. Uh, if the flash is too close to the white shirt, it will brown it um, a little bit on the edges. For this white, we're going to want the boards to be um, super tacky, super tack. It's not a glue, but it's, it, you know, as close as you can get to a glue without it being permanent. And that's going to keep the shirt on the board as we're spinning it around because the white ink is one of those print flash prints. It's going to get printed a layer, it's going to spin around, get flash dried, and then get another print right on top of that. And that'll just bring out the, the white and make it nice and bold. Today I'm printing on uh, Comfort Colors. They are 100% cotton. Like I said, I print on whatever the, the person that is doing the shirts wants to print on. I always like to suggest um, that I can get pretty much anything. This is my uh, white ink. It's from a company called Green Galaxy. Try to avoid your image uh, as much as you can. Like, Don't push the ink through that looks like fluff. This is actually just a pretty standard squeegee, I think. First thing to do is, is called flooding the image, and that's just gonna like, the image is kind of just filled with ink. It's called a flood. And that's just gonna help you get an even print. The traditional way is you grab it right here, get a good stance, 
this is what it looks like. And you got a good uh, like 45 degree angle, some nice pressure, and just pull back. And then I'll, I'll go over it twice. You can see, like I said, it has pretty good coverage for just a single. So that flash dryer is pumping out 700 degrees right now. This will come back right down on where the print is. Since our boards were tacky, like I said, they're, they're a little sticky, which sticks the shirt to the board. And then since we went, since I pulled it, I'll just pull it again because if you do two different ways, you might um, have like a ghosting effect. So I'll keep it the same way. One more down here. Pretty cool. And I just had a little bit of moisture in there that wasn't making the print um, totally cohesive. So that's the, the push method. The only thing is it dries out pretty quick in the screen, so I actually should be flooding that screen and making sure that the image is flooded. That'll help keep the that image from drying out. How's everyone doing? Everyone having fun? Two ends right here. You pull upwards like that. And then you can pull the shirt from back here when you got it right there. This is something that's like almost second nature to me. Um, but you just want to be as square as possible. So if I didn't go onto the board right now, you know, we're pretty straight. And then this is the hard part because there's a little there's a little bracket underneath here. And so if you hold it too tight like this, you're gonna hit that bracket and you're gonna stretch the shirt underneath. Uh, and yes, I do I do wear this sweatshirt that, that I printed myself all the time. And so for all the, the print nerds out there, I'm using Right now I'm using a, a 200 mesh screen. Uh, the mesh count is how small the holes are and the higher your mesh count, the smaller the, the weave is. Yeah, this is a 110, which I usually was, was using for all my basic images. I have a light table that the screen sits on top of and the image is in between. And then I turn the light on and it shines light. And then it hits all the spots that aren't black from a transparency and it hardens those and all the the black spots in the transparency um, light doesn't go through that hopefully so that'll wash out after and that'll be your image i would use uh, for beginning emulsions the the diazio stuff is actually the best it is a two-part system where you have but it comes it it should come together but you can buy it uh on its own and that will, um, that has a lot of forgiveness in the burning process. This is how I started first burning screens. And this used to have like a better uh, UV bulb in it. It just has a regular light bulb now. Um, but I would put the, the transparency on the screen and then shine this for about like five minutes on top of it. And then just got one good print. And then just finish it with a second. And that'll just smooth it. The smoother you can get it on that first hit, the better it's going to be the second time. You know what else I like to listen to randomly, though, is um, the, the Fallout soundtrack. Let me wander over yonder. What kind of soup are you making? I have a soup almost every week. Probably. Soup's great. Soup's great because you don't... I mean, you can follow the stuff, but just put a bunch of stuff in water and hope for the best, right? Here's a blue jean with white. Everyone having fun? Screen printing does have its benefits where you can start pretty cheap because you can get a wood screen for probably 15, 20 bucks. And you don't want to print a thousand shirts wrong. See, that's a nice bright white right here. I'll show you how I make a screen. I got one of these uh, transparencies. Um, big old sheet of clear plastic, basically. And so, yeah, this is a big 13 by 19 sheet that I print out of an uh, inkjet printer right down onto my light table. And I'll put the screen right down on top of that. If it washes out super easy, you know you did it right. If you're kind of sitting there and it's hard to wash out, you might have done it a 
little too long. Two different uh, UFO logos. Here with Speakeasy, I do it all. When you got a stack of fresh screens, all clean, there's nothing better. Um, so something like this shirt uses half tones. Half tones are tiny little dots. Yeah, they're like tiny little dots that make up a, an image. This is so universal, I feel, I don't, I think everyone should learn it. An artist for everyone. Oh, and one suggestion on starting printing too is, um, you can always look for stuff on Craigslist. All right, we're on to our front. We got it inked up. There's your front. Show the big back. We'll probably wrap it up there. Thanks for hanging. Peace out. Thank you.